If you had asked me who was winning the American League Central at the top of the season, I probably would have given you a shrug as an answer. The White Sox seemed like an easy pick with a bunch of controllable talent on both the lineup and the mound, as well as a bullpen that could hang with the best of the league. I might have said the Twins, with their revamped roster and star players returning from injury giving them a shot at sustained success. I might have even gone nuts and said the Detroit Tigers, after their sneaky good offseason in free agency, to add on to the talent that was displayed in their great second half of 2021. An answer I would not have given you was the Cleveland Guardians. The rise of the Guardians has come out of nowhere, at least to me. After four consecutive 90 plus win seasons from 2016 to 2019 and a playoff berth in the pandemic season, Cleveland stumbled to a mediocre 80 and 82 season in 2021. This came on the heels of a teardown of their roster where Cleveland fans saw the departure of Francisco Lindor, Carlos Carrasco, Tyler Naquin, Carlos Santana, Mike Clevenger, and Brad Hand, just to name a few. The 2021 team was certainly lacking the identity that the previous core had attained. They had solid starting pitching, lots of speed threats, decent defense, and a lot of young talent in general, but lacked the capability to put all of these pieces together into a winning model. Their 80 weighted runs created plus as a team ranked 24th among all MLB teams, and their 4.34 ERA climbed only to 18th among those rankings. It became clear to fans everywhere that this team had to commit to a path, either rebuild fully, further tearing down the roster to accumulate more prospect talent, or buy back into competing, acquiring talent in free agency to try and take back the AL Central crown from a weak crowd of opponents. I personally thought ownership might have been too cheap to head down the latter road, but they made the pivotal move to lock up their star Jose Ramirez on a seven-year, $141 million deal. For his talents, this contract was an absolute steal, but outside of this, Cleveland didn't commit any money to any notable free agents, meaning they were running back out largely the same team from the year prior. So how did we end up here? Per the day of this recording, the Guardians sit atop the American League Central and look poised to seize a top three seed in the American League. If you expected this, I commend you, or you're probably just lying to me, or you're a diehard fan. But let's take a look at this roster and everything that's changed and gone right for this team with a new name and a new identity. Before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor though, SeatGeek. Baseball season is in full swing and it's coming down to the wire, and that means you can get $20 off tickets at SeatGeek with promo code JOLLY. If you don't know what SeatGeek is, they're a ticketing app that makes buying tickets super simple. I've got the app on my phone and it's by far and away the easiest way to buy tickets. Seriously, if you can understand a stoplight, you'll understand their system. Green means a good ticket, yellow means okay, you can probably find a better price but this isn't bad, and red means stay away. I use it for baseball games being that I'm a Mets fan, but whether it's concerts, football, festivals, or more, SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple. And of course, I've got the hookup. Use code JOLLY for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code JOLLY. Make sure you click the link in my description to download the app and use the promo code today. Hopefully I see you at the ballpark. Okay, let's dive in. Let's start at the trade, a fitting place to begin being that it essentially ushered in a new era of Cleveland baseball. The Guardians were panned across the league initially when they traded franchise icons in Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco to the New York Mets heading into 2021. This trade has obviously worked out well for the Mets with Lindor and Carrasco both having spectacular seasons in their sophomore year in Queens. However, the trade return has also begun to work wonders for Cleveland as well. Cleveland received two low-level prospects in Josh Wolf and Isaiah Green, and while their performances have been good but not eye-popping, they provide good depth to the farm system. The two major league pieces they received are key here, as both of these guys have begun producing very well in the current season. The first is Ahmed Rosario, formerly ranked the number three prospect in all of baseball before his debut in 2017 for the Mets. He and the Mets never really worked out, as defensive woes and low on base numbers prevented him from reaching his maximum potential. I was a big Rosario guy as a Mets fan, and this was pretty heartbreaking to see. Cleveland, however, has watched Rosario mature in every facet of his game. Rosario made 33 errors in two seasons at shortstop for the Mets from 2017 to 2018, but this season for the Guardians, he's made just eight errors in 105 games at the toughest position on the infield. Rosario's always been gifted with speed in addition to his improved defense, though has never really been able to apply it to the best of its potential. After leading all of MLB with 10 caught stealings in 2019, Rosario has become a prominent threat on the base paths, stealing 24 
four bases the past two years and only being caught three times in that span. This comes thanks to a 29.5 feet per second sprint speed, which ranks in the 95th percentile of all major league position players, putting him on par with some of the fastest guys in the game. Rosario's offense definitely peaked in 2019, but he ultimately struggled with the bat during his time in the orange and blue. Nowadays, he has a pretty respectable triple slash line with a much better career on base. He's already compiled 5.4 B war in two Cleveland seasons, already nearly two wins better than his four years in New York thanks to his more well-rounded play. As most fans know though, the player that has become the marquee piece of this trade is 2022 All-Star second baseman Andres Jimenez. Jimenez had a brief stint with the Mets in the 2020 pandemic season, and although his time was short, he fully endeared himself to Mets fans with his gritty style of play and fantastic defense in the middle infield. To most people, he was well worth the sacrifice to acquire and extend Francisco Lindor though. However, Jimenez is quickly blossoming into arguably the best second baseman in all of baseball with the Guardians. He currently ranks in the top three of various offensive categories among second basemen, including batting average, on-base percentage, slugging, RBI, and stolen bases, but Jimenez's game goes beyond his offensive prowess. He's playing gold glove caliber defense at second this season, with his six outs above average ranking in the 94th percentile of all major league fielders. He also ranks in the 94th percentile of sprint speed, similar to Ahmed Rosario, with his 29.3 feet per second average being on par with the renowned speedsters of the game such as Kevin Kiermeyer and Mike Trout. He's been worth 4.5 F4 this season alone, the 14th best total among all position players in MLB. This makes the Guardians one of just four MLB teams with two position players in the top 15 of F4, with one being Jimenez and the other being all-star third baseman Jose Ramirez. Yeah, we should probably talk about this J-Ram fella. I hear he's pretty good. I mean, there's so much and so little to say at the same time because everybody knows how good Jose Ramirez is. I'll go over his rankings in brief because this video is really about the other guys on the roster carrying weight around his massive output. All right, here we go. He leads all American League hitters in doubles as he collected 14 doubles in June alone, more than the previous two months combined. He's second in the AL for RBI and top five in all of MLB for RBIs past the seventh inning. He has the third lowest strikeout percentage among qualified AL hitters. He ranks fourth in the league for slugging percentage and fifth for weighted runs created plus. He has an OPS over 1,100 with runners in scoring position and that OPS goes over 1,200 when there's also two outs. He's in the 83rd percentile of sprint speed on top of all of this and his spray chart touches every single part of the field. Jose Ramirez is incredibly good. You know it, I know it, let's just move on, shall we? But it's not just these three guys in the infield carrying all the weight on the lineup. The Guardians have gotten contributions from all of their young position players. Though he has cooled down in August, Josh Naylor has put together a solid year, already setting a career high in plate appearances, doubles, home runs, and RBIs this season. Naylor has battled injuries all throughout his career, but healthy in 2022, he's become Cleveland's resident righty crusher. The Guardians have also been good about letting their young guys work through their kinks, being that they are the youngest roster in the league. This is specific to Stephen Kwan, who stormed onto the scene with a 354 batting average and 959 OPS in his debut month in April, famously not whiffing on a pitch through the first week or so of the entire season. Kwan currently ranks in the 100th percentile of whiffs and strikeout percentage, basing a claim that he might be the best contact bat in all of baseball. Of all qualified hitters, only Luis Arias has struck out less times than Stephen Kwan, but he came crashing back down to earth with a tough May, batting just 173 and seeing his season OPS drop as low as 673. Cleveland did, however, stick with him instead of using one of his many options, and Kwan regained form during the summer. Batting primarily first and second and playing stellar defense in the 94th percentile of outs above average, Kwan has turned his season around. He's likely the most impressive rookie in the American League outside of the transcendent Julio Rodriguez and Adley Rushman. If these two weren't debuting this year, he had a real shot at a rookie of the year. They got hot early season stats from Owen Miller and great recent performances from Oscar Gonzalez and have ultimately pieced together a solid league offense built on contact and speed. Cleveland's offense simply never strikes out with their 18.3 strikeout percentage besting every other team by a decent margin. They also place in the top five of other important categories like stolen bases, sacrifice flies, and various contact rates. Cleveland has three everyday hitters in the top seven of contact percentage in the AL, as well as five everyday hitters in the top 15 of out-of-zone contact percentage in the American League. But carrying a ton of the weight as it always has for Cleveland's franchise is the pitching, which currently ranks in the top 10 of ERA, a normal sight for Guardians fans. Let's dive into who's dealing this year for the team. Currently at the top of the rotation is kind of a surprise. It's former first rounder Tristan McKenzie, who is blossoming into an ace caliber pitcher in his third year with Cleveland. McKenzie's build and arsenal is one of the most interesting in baseball, as he's remarkably lanky at 6'5 and just 
165 pounds, while only using three pitches as opposed to the traditional starter's average output of four to five. The biggest change in his game has been an improved four-seam fastball, which registered a plus six run value in 2021, not good, and a minus 10 run value this year, pretty good. Run value is the run impact of an event based on the runners on base, outs, ball, and strike count, meaning getting outs with a certain pitch in more high leverage situations will assist run value totals more. McKenzie's been trusting his four-seamer far more than before, throwing at 5% more than last year, and his minus 10 run value makes his pitch the 17th best four-seamer in all of MLB. He's also attacked the zone much more overall, seeing a drop in walk percentage over 5% from last year. McKenzie's aggressive approach and his primarily vertical moving arsenal has led him to lead the American League with a 48.5 fly ball percentage, which has made him victim to the home run ball more so than past years. McKenzie's also been an absolute workhorse in recent months, despite not having the traditional or expected build of an innings eater. He's just one of 16 starters in MLB with at least eight starts of seven or more innings pitched. But of course, it's not just McKenzie. While he's been inconsistent from month to month, Shane Bieber has been his usual dominant self for Cleveland as well. The former 2020 Cy Young winner has seen a surprising drop in strikeout percentage, dipping over 8% from his 2021 average. Many were alarmed by his near 1.5 mile per hour dip in velocity from last season to now, but Bieber has overcome this and turned it into a non-issue. He brought back his cutter from 3% usage last year to over 12% this year, while also beginning to use his slider more than his curveball. This more horizontal approach has helped balloon his ground ball contact rates, with his 47.3% mark ranking 13th in MLB and obviously playing well into the stellar infield defense of the Guardians. Bieber ranks second in the American League, only behind Shane McClanahan, with a 31.7 called swinging strike percentage, meaning he's absolutely pounding the zone and getting whips when he needs them. Outside of the two aces at the top, the Guardians have gotten solid results from the likes of Cal Quantrill and Zach Plesak to round out the bottom half of their starting rotation. But some seriously good numbers come from their new and improved bullpen, with their 3.30 bullpen ERA ranking sixth in MLB. The cast stars familiar and new faces from the 2021 squad. At the top of the food chain is obviously Emmanuel Classe, who has been one of the best closers in baseball for over two years at this point. There's no real science to deciphering why Classe is so good, he's just absolutely nasty. He ranks in the 100th percentile of chase rate, fastball spin, and fastball velocity, with his cut fastball being the best in the game since Mariano Rivera, basically. Hitters are only becoming more befuddled against him too, helping him to a jump in out of zone swing percentage worth over 10% between seasons. Just a quick reminder that the Padres traded this guy for catcher Brett Nicholas, who never played for them, and then the Rangers, who got him for nothing, went ahead and traded this guy for Corey Kluber, who they got approximately one inning out of. Hindsight is 2020, of course, but come on, guys. But there are more pieces to the Cleveland bullpen machine outside of the engine that is Emmanuel Classe. One huge bright spot for the team this year has been the new setup man on the block, Trevor Steffen, who was a former Rule 5 draft acquisition from the New York Yankees. Steffen was a below average innings leader in the middle of the bullpen for Cleveland last season, though a few changes to his game plan has completely altered his outlook as a big time reliever. Though he averages 97 miles per hour on his four seam fastball with decent spin, his four seamer is arguably his weakest pitch, which is a scary thought. Stefan thrives on his slider splitter combo, which has become devastating this season. After having success with his slider at 83.5 miles per hour in 2021, he's added nearly three whole miles per hour to it this season while still retaining its original horizontal movement. But Stefan's key change has been the upgraded usage of his splitter, which he used 8% this time last season and now uses over 25% of the time this season. This helped diversify his original fastball slider combo, which traditionally doesn't fare well against left-handed hitters if you're a right-handed thrower. Because he throws his splitter with such velocity, it appears as his four seam at the beginning before the bottom drops out completely, leaving most hitters flailing for their lives. This directly correlates to an 11% boost in out-of-zone swing percentage from 2021, as most of his splitters end up well below the zone. Cleveland's coaching staff has found success thanks to a uniform approach that seems to be taught to every pitcher on the roster, regardless of their role on the team. Attacking the zone early, getting ahead in counts, and working below the zone to yield balls in play to their above average defense. Here are some rankings. All four primary Cleveland starters rank in the top 20 of American League pitchers for out of zone swing percentage. The Cleveland rotation has three starters in the top 12 of ground ball percentage, and the Cleveland bullpen also has three pitchers in the top 10 of American League relievers for ground ball percentage as well. The strategic approach, as well as the trust placed in young players on Cleveland's roster, has paid dividends for them this season. And with a month to go, they're looking at their first division. 
Division title win in over three years. They haven't dropped a series in a month and a half now. This is a historically successful franchise of the past decade too, which I feel like people don't really grasp too well. Since 2013, Cleveland is one of just five teams in baseball to amass 800 wins, in a class with the Astros, the Cardinals, the Yankees, and the Dodgers. I don't know if 2022 is the year they finally break their curse, but what I do know is that Cleveland knows how to execute a successful and sustainable team product, even though they certainly could benefit from spending more than just pennies in free agency every year. This is a team a piece or two away from seriously competing for a World Series title again, and whether that comes via blockbuster trade or another splash contract, I'm excited to see where the Guardians go beyond this magic season. Let's see if they can finish strong. Hopefully I didn't jinx them. And if I did, come back to this video and flood the comments with vitriol. It's only fair, right? But that'll do it for this video. I'm the Jolly Olive, and I'll see you guys next time.